So many people that put out informational Medicare videos like to demonize Medicare Advantage plans. Maybe you've noticed this watching videos or listening to things on YouTube or other platforms. My name is Christian Brenda. I'm a licensed insurance agent specializing in Medicare health plans. We do Medicare Advantage plans. We do Medicare supplement plans with a litany of different insurance companies. But in this video, I'm going to talk to you about what is the truth about what's coming for Medicare supplement beneficiaries that none of these people want to talk about and none of them will be honest and tell you? For anybody that's not familiar with what a Medicare supplement is, it's also known as a Medigap. Medicare supplement is a secondary insurance company that comes in and provides a secondary insurance to Medicare. Medicare pays for medical bills, doctor visits, hospital stays, surgeries, durable medical equipment, etc. But Medicare leaves behind oftentimes deductibles and most notably on Medicare Part B, an unlimited 20% out of pocket on a lot of medical charges. And that can be very, very um, overwhelming financially for a lot of folks on Medicare and seniors to come up with. So there's kind of two different ways a person can go with their Medicare. They can go Medicare supplement plans and then go Medicare Advantage plans. Those are kind of the two different directions that you can go with your Medicare to pair it with a product that fills in the gaps of items that it doesn't cover. And Medicare most notably doesn't cover not only the 20% on the medical side and the deductibles, but prescription drugs, dental, vision, and hearing. Well, with Medicare supplement plans, there's so many good aspects about it. It's not a lie necessarily. Medicare supplement plans give you usually close to full medical coverage. If you've been on a Medicare supplement plan for some time, maybe you have a grandfathered in plan like a plan F that does give you full medical coverage as long as it's a medically covered charge under Medicare. But with Medicare supplement plans, they will only pay for items that Medicare pays first. So for example, since Medicare only covers medical bills, black and white medical bills, there is nothing in between that it will cover that's not a medical bill, like a prescription. You have to pick up a secondary prescription drug plan because the supplement will only pay for things that Medicare pays first, okay? The supplement will mirror Medicare. It's like a copycat insurance, think of it like that. So when you get a per Medicare supplement plan, you have to pick up a secondary, you have to pick up a separate, excuse me, prescription drug plan through a private insurance company. They call these standalone Part D prescription drug plans, also known as PDPs in the industry. Now, Medicare supplement plans, as I mentioned, have a lot of great aspects to them, right? You have full medical coverage, if not close to full medical coverage. You don't have any network of providers. As long as the provider that you're going to accepts original Medicare, you can go there. It doesn't matter what state it's in. It works the same in all 50 states. And nowadays, 97 to 98% of providers in the country that are traditional medical providers, doctors, hospitals, et cetera, will accept original Medicare. So it all sounds good, right? You pay the extra cost for the Medicare supplement plan. It's a higher premium, but you get better coverage, right? That's usually the narrative that people like to spin. It's not to say that that narrative is wrong, but it's just a partial narrative on where the industry is going right now and where Medicare is going as a whole. What they don't like to tell you is that on average, in most cases, if somebody has a large list of prescriptions or they take any expensive list of prescriptions, tier three, tier four, brand name prescriptions, that the drug costs on Part D prescription drug plans are starting to deteriorate. And we've seen this for many years now. The drug cost ends up being, in some cases, thousands of dollars less. $1,000, $500, maybe two or $3,000 this year in 2024, less than the best Medicare Advantage plan available in a lot of markets. So you save this money on saving on the copays because Medicare Advantage plans have copays. They have a $0 monthly premium, but you have copays, whereas a Medicare supplement, you have a higher premium. You usually have little to no copays, but you end up paying a lot more on the prescription drugs. So why is this? Why is this happening? In 2022, the Biden administration passed the Inflation Reduction Act, a bill that was ultimately designed to cover a whole litany of different things having to do with the economy. A big portion of it, however, has to do with Medicare prescription drug coverage and prescription drug coverage as a whole and prescription drug costs in the United States of America. Now, on the surface, this bill looks like it might potentially be helpful for Medicare beneficiaries, right? Um, and it's something that has a yearly impact as we go of different things that actually kick in as we go. 
the most notable and the one that got the most press coverage was in 2025, January 1, 2025. All Medicare prescription drug plans are required to put in a mandatory $2,000 maximum out-of-pocket cap limit. Now, you may or may not know this, but Medicare has never had, Medicare plans, I should say, Medicare Part D plans have never had, whether you get it through a Medicare Advantage plan or a standalone prescription drug plan, have never had a maximum out-of-pocket limit up until 2024 when they added that into part of the catastrophic coverage stage limit, which has to do with the Medicare donut hole, the Medicare coverage gap. If you're curious to learn more about the donut hole or the coverage gap, we have a video specifically on that. Comment down below and we will link it for you on that specific video that explains the donut hole and the coverage gap. However, this sounds like on the surface a good thing, right? There was no maximum out of pocket limit. Now there is a maximum out of pocket limit. Well, what most people don't understand is Medicare Advantage plans get a tremendous amount of funding from the federal government. This is how so many of them are able to be offered at a $0 monthly premium. The money's coming from somewhere. Nothing is zero. Nothing is free in this life. Whereas individual Part D prescription drug plans that go with Medicare supplement plans, they're standalone, remember. They are not part of your Medicare supplement plan, they're an extra policy you get because Medicare supplement plans don't cover prescriptions. It's almost similar to your homeowner's insurance being separate from your car insurance, although you can bundle those and get discounts. You, really, you cannot do that with Medicare supplements and Part D prescription drug plans. But Part D prescription drug plans usually vary in terms of a premium. In this, in this calendar year, in 2024, there's some that are um, zero in some states, 50 cents, 75 cents in some states, and there's some that go all the way up to $100, $150 a month in premium in some markets. Now, that being said, the premium that the person pays for the standalone prescription drug plan is oftentimes most of the revenue that the plan gets for the coverage. There's a little bit of funding that the federal government provides to Part D prescription drug plans, but not even a sliver of what they provide to Medicare Advantage plans. What does this mean? It means when insurance companies get squeezed, they ultimately end up reflecting that on premiums or coverage to kind of make up for their loss of profits. Medicare Advantage plans are going to be able to weather this storm, we believe, much greater than individual prescription drug plans. Well, because they get so much more funding, it's not as much of a dent. But Medicare insurance companies that are, exist in the Part D prescription drug realm really don't want to be in that space anyway. They use it more as an opportunity, as a foot in the door with potential Medicare beneficiaries. But they don't profit very heavily at all for these types of plans. In fact, some companies have even, have, have even come out and announced they're going to be leaving the space. And I believe that there will be more to come from that. Now, what are we going to see in 2024 open enrollment, the annual election period that kicks off in October for January 1st effective date plans? I am of the opinion we are going to see significant increases in prices. Some people think that in the Inflation Reduction Act, it prevents insurance companies in the Medicare space on the Part D side from capping their premiums, but they read it wrong. It actually um, is not nearly what most people believe it to be, and we will see premiums go up quite a bit. We'll see companies pull out of the space and cancel, meaning less competition. We'll also see coinsurances and costs go up significantly. So what this means is for the people that are spending five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars a year in prescription drug costs, this is going to be a good thing for them because they have a two thousand dollar cap. But for the for the average person that never spends two thousand dollars a year and out of pocket for prescription drugs in a year, maybe the person spends five hundred a year, six hundred a year, eight hundred dollars a year in copays, maybe a thousand, maybe even twelve hundred. They are going to spend much more and get much closer to that two thousand dollar cap when they never would have spent $2,000 before. So ultimately what we're going to see is this problem that we're already seeing now, where if you compare prescription drug costs on the best standalone prescription drug plan in most markets, and you compare the same prescription costs on the best Medicare Advantage plan, oftentimes the Medicare Advantage plan comes out ahead in many, many scenarios in many, many states and many, many markets across the country. So. Yes, you might save your copays on Medicare supplement plans. You might not have to go through as many pre-authorizations on, Medi on Medicare supplement plans. You might not have to play within a provider network on Medicare supplement plans. 
but you might spend a arm and a leg more in prescription drug costs than you would on a Medicare Advantage plan going forward, especially if your prescription drug needs are vast or you take even a few expensive prescriptions, tier threes, tier fours. This to me is going to be the slow downfall of the Medicare supplement product over time. Now, does that mean you shouldn't get a Medicare supplement plan today? No, I'm not saying that. Medicare supplement plans have a place. They have a lot of pros, a lot of good things about them, as we talked about at the beginning of this video. They're very viable options. But what we're seeing is rate increases being higher than ever on Medicare supplement plans. So many plans on every plan they have available, F's, G's, N's, etc., this year in 2024 have seen 10, 15, 20% rate increases all around the country. This is not sustainable for Medicare beneficiaries. And if you factor that in, that their drug costs will be double, if not triple, on what it could be on a Medicare Advantage plan, it might just tip the scales to where the Medicare supplement lure is lost. And this is what people that are Medicare supplement um, advocates and anti-Medicare Advantage um, propagandists, for lack of a better word, refuse to tell you that your prescription drug costs will you oftentimes be much less on Medicare Advantage than it will be on Medicare Supplement, especially if you're taking a lot of prescriptions. And this is going to become more and more and more of a factor as time goes. Now, if you're watching this and you have a Medicare Supplement plan, does it mean that you should just get off of the Medicare Supplement plan and go to Medicare Advantage? Not necessarily, but it might be good to compare head up. Medicare Advantage plans do have max out of pockets on their medical benefits. Oftentimes they don't charge any deductibles or anything like that. They just charge, charge copays. When most people understand the difference between a deductible and a max out of pocket and the difference between a deductible and a copay, they usually find that Medicare Advantage plans are pretty good coverage. They're pretty good plans. Much better than most insurance they've had leading up to their life. So are Medicare supplements. But it's not a situation where one is good and one is evil. One is good coverage, one is bad coverage. It's a situation of good coverage with Medicare Advantage and better with Medicare Supplement. But the conversation increasingly is, is the extra cost for the Medicare Supplement, the Medicare Supplement Premium that's going up more than ever at record-breaking levels right now, the Part D plan that's going to go up and through the roof over the next few years, and the increased prescription drug copays, or all of those extra costs warrant the difference in coverage between a Medicare Advantage and a Medicare Supplement plan. And this is what the Medicare Supplement Pro folks and anti-Medicare Advantage folks will not tell you. Anyway, folks, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it educational, helpful, do me a favor, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's going to help more people on Medicare find this information who need to hear this information desperately. Make sure to reach out to us Our, at Christian Brindle Insurance Services, also known as Everything Senior Insurance. We are licensed in over 40 states, 45 states to be exact, and we can help you with your Medicare options. We work with a multitude of different insurance companies, and we do not just Medicare supplements. We do Medicare supplements, Medicare Advantage plans, standalone prescription drug plans. We speak Medicare, and we can guide you through these options with and with no biases and an expectation of finding the best plan based on your needs and preferences. Our contact information can be found in the description of this video. Hope you reach out to us and work with one of our licensed professionals. Our team is fantastic. We give you lifetime customer service when you have a plan with us. We hope you found this video helpful. Comment your thoughts down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I'd love to have a dialogue with you. Make sure to subscribe for weekly Medicare content. We'll be back next time. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. And happy Medicare, everybody.